This video is going to introduce you to the bare minimum requirements to create a general journal in Microsoft Excel. We're going to enter in a couple of transactions, summarize them in the pivot table, and then generate our income statement, statement of owner's equity, and balance sheet. This isn't something you do for a full business, but it works great for a class project or just trying to play around with journal entries. We'll start with the general journal that I have on the left. I've input a couple sample transactions for us. I'm going to select all of the data and then pull down selection box. One key is to always select a couple extra rows. That way, if you come back later and add more data, the pivot table still works. Let's go ahead and do insert. I'm going to grab my pivot table. And just to make life easier, I'm going to put it right next to my entry over here. You can put this on a different sheet if you like, but I find it easy to put things side by side. My pivot table, I'm going to grab the account drop it in rows, and then add the debits and credits to the values. Now I have a very simple trial balance that shows me all the entries in each of my accounts. I have bank loan, cash with debits and credits, and now I can start doing my financial statements. For the basic income statement, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the enter key on the keyboard and then select the cell for sales revenue. Next I'll do cost of goods sold. and then calculate the net income as revenue minus cost of goods sold. Let's go ahead and add the other statements as well. We've got a statement of owner's equity that has my common stock of initial investment in the business, as well as any net income, which then turns into retained earnings. With my balance sheet, I've got cash, inventory, as well as a bank loan, retained earnings, common stock, and other elements. Now, if I look at this, I might see one interesting problem. The inventory at the moment shows $180 which means that the total of balance doesn't quite match. This is one of the benefits of using a journal entry in Excel because I can quickly find problems like this and then resolve them. If I look back at my pivot table, I can see I misspelled inventory on one of the fields here. I go back to my journal and take a look and find that item. Here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the R, make sure I haven't spelled it correctly and then come back and refresh the pivot table. Now you notice the extra line, line inventory disappeared and now I have the actual credit. Now my inventory, I can come into it and set it again to the debits minus the credits, which gives me the correct value of $140 and now it matches. This is the key. Whenever you make a change on the left, refresh your pivot table and the statements on the right should update automatically. I also have to be careful about putting spaces and things. So in transaction two, I've got a credit to cash. If I put a couple extra spaces in here and then refresh my pivot table, you'll see that I have a second cash entry. And so it's not all consolidated on a single line. If I wanna make it look a little nicer, what I can do is instead of putting spaces in, click on it and then hit the button over here that says increase indent. Another common problem is people who type a space after a word. For example, I have cash and space. Now, if I refresh my pivot table, you see again, I have two caches, a cache here and a cache here. It might be tricky to figure out exactly which cache is the problem. So I look at it and I find the problem right here. Another option is if you can dial down more details by dropping ID under rows. This lets me see every single transaction that hit those. Now I can come in and say, oh wait, cash over here with item number four, that's my problem. So now to dial in on that, delete the space, update my pivot table. Now it's on the same thing. I can pull ID out and look back. And now my income statement, statement of owner's equity and balance sheet are all in good shape. I can also dress things up by coming in here and formatting a little bit. Beyond indenting a couple of fields over, you can also dress it up by giving proper formatting. For example, the accounting data format. We can also come over to financial statements and do the same formatting over here, as well as bold things, and maybe even doing a couple underlines to show that this is a summary for that field. Other options to make it look nicer, I can go ahead and center and fill in a couple of fills on the background. Again, not required, but it's just something to make it look a little bit nicer as you play with it.
Hopefully that video gives you a basic idea of how to make some financial statements in Microsoft Excel.